why BC? Why here and nowhere else in the world? Uh, it's just a numbers game. So, so numbers for you. There's four million people that live in BC. So it's the same amount of people that live in Ireland or in Denmark or some countries like that. Right now, we have two oil pipelines that you probably have heard of called Kinder Morgan and Enbridge, um, each possibly containing upwards of 150 million tons of carbon. That's 300 million tons of carbon per year. That's likely to come from those pipelines. Uh, we have a port which wants to make this the biggest coal exporting facility in North America. It's another 100 million tons of carbon, potentially. And we have a provincial government that wants to build our economic future around liquefied natural gas. Now what they should call it is liquefied fracked gas because it's not natural. It's coming from unconventional processes where we swap our fresh water for gas. Uh, and methane is a huge byproduct of that process. It influences the, the climate far in, in a much more serious way than carbon dioxide does. So it's a huge uh, climate change contributor. In fact, it's about 200 million tons of carbon if you take the number of LNG plants that are proposed for our west coast seriously by the province. So when you take that much carbon and you take how many people there are here in the, in the province, each person actually sits on, if they get active, about 100 times more carbon than pretty much anybody else in the world. So what that means is if you care about climate change uh, from anything that I speak to you about, you're as powerful as 100 other people across the world, 100 Irish or 100 Danish or 100 Chinese people, because when you fight back on climate change, you're sitting on a lot more carbon, 100 times more carbon than anybody else. And that's a really important message for you to realize, because when you're met with this sort of federal governance system and these overarching companies that have such a, a huge uh, way of swaying politics, never forget how powerful you are. And a big role that these PR companies uh, play in the in the way that you're kept sort of believing that you're not that powerful is they're designed to make you feel separated. Um, a lot of people say, well, there's no silver bullet to confront the situation we're in. And I don't believe that's true. I think that community is a silver bullet. And if we actually develop a community that says no to fracking, no to LNG, no to coal exports that's used to burn for energy, uh, and no to bitumen pipelines, then we're going to create an amazing future for ourselves. Um, before we sort of get to the, the video, I just want to describe why it's called Save the Salish Sea. So for this part of the world, most of that carbon is going to be funneled down a tiny piece of water. It's only just over one nautical mile wide. Uh, it's called the Salish Sea. And when we calculated all the carbon that could come out of BC and come down through that part of the world, we realized that this could be one of the biggest carbon corridors in the world. We would be synonymous with the only bigger one than this is the Strait of Hormuz in Iran. So we will be the place that supply the most amount of carbon for climate change per person than anywhere else in the world. And I don't believe that young folks or old folks or anybody in BC wants to be known as the place that allowed this to happen. Um, so we've picked out the State of Sea uh, as an organization, the Wilderness Committee, and our partners at Georgia Strait Alliance. And we've said that this is where we're going to draw a line in the wet sand. And we're going to say, that we turned the corner on climate change in BC because we refuse to allow the Salish Sea to become the world's most prominent carbon corridor. So the video describes that really, really well, and I will be showing that to you, and I want to cut through pretty quickly because I don't have a huge amount of time. This, the next point I want to make to you is a little bit uh, about oil spills and about toxic spills in general, because you hear a lot about the likelihood of there being an oil spill from a tanker or a pipeline. Um, there's another mad Irish man out there working on tar sands, and he is the physician for a town called Fort Mackay. And Fort Mackay sits in the middle of the tar sands project, which, if we allow these bitumen pipelines to proceed, will be three times bigger. And that community, it's mostly a First Nations community, is being poisoned ever increasingly, every, every day, by the presence of that industry next door. Okay? The particular illness that's prevalent in that community is bile duct cancer. And it's been tied to the levels to, of carcinogens that these folks are being exposed to. Uh, it's duct cancer, it's, it's in, in, intestinal cancers. And what he's said to me, we're now friends on, 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 over the phone, on, on, he's actually going to come out on a speaking tour soon, so we're going to get to meet him in person. What he said to me was, if you're not successful in stopping these bitumen pipelines, and if the tar sands goes three times bigger, our community is doomed. We will not survive that. 
Okay, so I want you to remember that there is a constant toxic spill every single day that the tar sands is allowed to be in existence into that community, into the health of that community. Um, there is also a toxic spill into the politics of Canada where human rights are being hugely eroded by the allowance of the tar sands and the growth of the tar sands. What I mean by that is that the federal government has begun to erode the ability for folks to participate in decision making over these big projects. Um, the actual legislation itself was called B Bill C-38. It's so bad now that my, my own family live in Ireland that in Europe, Canada is becoming synonymous not with environmental leadership. So when CFCs became a danger to the human world, the human society, Canada led the world towards the Montreal Protocol and brought in international agreements to try and stop CFCs. And it was good at that. It was the ozone layer that needed protection in that case. Now, the reputation of Canada is that it's the only country in the world to leave the international agreements on climate change. It's in Europe trying to stop Europe labeling tar sands as dirty, which is the right thing to do. It is a very dirty product. It's certainly more um, impactful on the climate than any other type of oil. Uh, simultaneously, a letter came out from the, the, the Prime Minister's office last week celebrating and applauding uh, Australia for repealing its carbon tax laws. So now Canada actually applauds other countries for not doing the right thing on climate change. And the word that spreads through the UK and Ireland now is about the First Nations peoples in Northern Alberta being poisoned by Canada. So our reputation has changed so drastically that I call it a toxic spill. Um, and it's one that I hope the combination of human rights and environment education you're getting right now will bring you to that conclusion and will we'll connect the dots. Um, there is, it's not actually enshrined in law in Canada yet, but there is a human right to a healthy environment in a lot of countries in, in, in the world. Um, we haven't enshrined that into law yet, and it's something that I hope to see one day in my lifetime. I certainly believe on a human level that that human right exists, and that currently federal government policy on energy is eroding that, that human right. Um, the overarching picture, uh, what we can do about all of these um, projects that are proposed for BC, the video is actually pretty good at telling you about that, so I'll use up my last few minutes showing this to you. <coughs> Asia. 
as a young person in this part of the world, when I think about coal, uh, my visions of it are almost in black and white. I almost see it as something that we, that we used to do before we knew any better. It's becoming stigmatized uh, around this continent. It's becoming harder and harder to mine and harder and harder to ship. Uh, what's happening then is uh, a lot of this US-based coal is being brought up by rail into Canada and shipped through the Salish Sea. For people who live along this body of water, there's going to be a marked difference in the near future. There's an application to build a whole new coal exporting facility in Surrey. We also have a huge facility exporting coal in Delta called the West Shore Dock. The aim is to make this the biggest coal exporter in North America. Just south of where we're standing right now is another carbon exporter. That's the Kinder Morgan Tar Sands Dock. There was only 80 odd tankers a year. Suddenly we're going to 400, more than one a day. It's a huge difference in traffic. These are spiritual waters for local First Nations here. The term Coast Salish means people of the Salish Sea. It's core to their cultural identity. So for me, these waters represent where we drew a line in the sand. And we said no, we have a cleaner future, and our children have a cleaner future. For locals like myself, coal shipments will grow twice as big as twice as many shipments come in on trains. They're going to go on to bigger bulk carrying ships, and more of them. So suddenly, what was our recreational body of water is just going to become the most trafficked carbon center in the world. If we can stop this, we will be game changers in the fight against climate change. Climate change is going to be the challenge of our time, and, uh, and we're right in the place to, uh, to be a big part of that fight. When you take a look at how much carbon is going to pass right through our greenest city in the world here, it's a hundred times more than any other place with this many people. So when I hear someone say no to this, and that they want a cleaner future here in British Columbia, when they say, we're going to deal with climate change, for me, I hear a hundred voices elsewhere in the world hundred Irish voices or a hundred Chinese voices, all of whom cannot control this amount of carbon. We can stop climate change here in British Columbia if we choose to. Okay, two quick points before I finish up. Um, it mentioned a new coal terminal in Surrey, that's called the Fraser Surrey Docks. Right now, for a long, long time, Willard's Committee and other organizations have campaigned against the Port Metro Vancouver regulating body. That's the body who actually decides if a new coal terminal should arrive into Surrey for an independent hearing, kind of like what Northern Gateway is when the public comes in and discusses the issue. We were refused that for a long time, well, actually just kind of ignored. And then, basically there was a backlash from the public and groups like Humans in Coal, Dogwood Initiative, Voters Taking Action on Climate Change, uh, and us, the Women's Committee, we just got out into communities and just started to speak to them. And folks, once they learned about the idea, said, hell no, we're not going to take U.S. thermal coal into our communities on trains for it to go to Asia, for it to burn for energy, for it to come back in the shape of mercury and climate change for our communities. It's, it's stupid. Um, the problem is that not enough folks know about it. And eventually, as the port listened to all of its groundswell, it said, okay, we'll do your environmental assessment thing, we'll give you your public hearing. What they actually gave us was a facility that lasts about two or three weeks where we can just submit comments online uh, on the papers submitted to them by Fraser Surrey Docs. It's a joke. But we want you and we want you to tell your friends that it's important for us to get our comments in there to say we need better than this. We need health impact assessments. Uh, we need to talk about climate change. The scope, the actual amount of information they'll look at is narrowed so much they'll never look at climate impacts. They'll never look at the 17 million tons of carbon that's going to come from there. To give you a perspective, the whole province right now, if you don't include our exports, produces about 60 million tons of carbon. So I would love for you to consider getting involved in the comment period at Port Metro Vancouver and submit your comments. Say, I'm X age. This is destructive to my future. I don't want this to happen. And I want you to tell your friends to do it too. To get the facility to do that, we just link to it on our, on our Save the Sailor Sea website. So that's sailorseaaction.org or come to me and talk to me. 